another balloon. And this time, let's think a little bit about how exactly we're inflating this balloon. Now, we're not changing its temperature, so Charles's law doesn't apply. We're increasing its volume, but without changing its temperature, there's no Charles law. And we're not changing the pressure on the outside of the balloon, which is what would be required for Boyle's law to show that the balloon's volume increases. In fact, what we've done is we've come to a point where we're now going to find out the third law from Mother Nature, which governs the inflation of balloons. And that was a relationship first noted by Amadeo Avogadro in 1811, and it looks something like this. Avogadro's law reads, at constant temperature and pressure, the volume of a gas is directly proportional to the number of moles of gas. Now, a really dramatic example of that fact is in airbags, which are as a secondary safety device in cars. Inside an airbag is, a, is an amount of sodium azide, NaN3, which is a solid, and ferric oxide, Fe2O3, which is also a solid. So really, there's no gas at all in the airbag when it's sitting in your dashboard. And we can say that the number of moles of gas is zero, and so the volume is essentially zero. But when you get into an accident, the sodium azide and the ferric oxide react to form another solid, some iron metal. None of these are going to really add to the volume. But you get nine moles of nitrogen gas for every six moles of sodium azide you started with. And it's this contribution, again, Volume is proportional to number of moles, which causes the rapid expansion and deployment of the airbag when you get into an accident. All right, let's see how we're going to use Avogadro's law to solve some problems. And the first problem, or the, the problem we're going to look at, uh, we're going to apply V over N is equal to a constant, which was Avogadro's law. Again, with the caveat, it's at fixed temperature and pressure. Let's consider a helium balloon, which we know contains a tenth of a mole of gas, and it occupies 2.4 liters at 25 degrees C, and one atmosphere. Okay, So we have this helium balloon. And the question we'd like to answer is, if we inflate it to 5.6 liters, how many moles of gas have we added? Now, this problem is a little bit different from stuff we've looked at before, because typically we just say, what's the final number of moles? What's the initial number of moles? In this case, we want to know how many moles we've added. So we're going to have to do an extra step, and I'll show you that step and walk you through it. So let's first calculate what the final number of moles is. And to do that, we're going to have to use Avogadro's law. We're going to calculate the final number of moles. We have 5.6. that V over N is equal to a constant. We know that we can state the relationship that the initial volume divided by the initial number of moles is equal to the final volume divided by the initial number of moles. And now we've got to do a little bit of algebra. And it's going to be a little bit different this time because we need to solve for the final number of moles. So we're going to take this, multiply both sides by NF, and divide by 1 over this. And we get that NF is equal to VF times Ni over vi. Okay, So it's just a simple algebraic transformation to get to this stage. And now we can plug in. We know what the final volume was. It was 5.6 liters. The initial number of moles was a tenth of a mole. And the initial volume was 2.4 liters. So we know all of these quantities. We can go ahead and plug in. And we get NF is equal to 5.6 liters times 0 0.10 moles over 2.4 liters. And that's equal to 0 0.23 moles. So that's the final volume. But remember, the problem that was posed is, how many moles have we added? And how many of the moles that we've added, which we'll call 
delta n, where delta means change, is equal to the final number of moles minus the initial number of moles. So we have that we've already calculated the final. It's 0 0.23. The initial number of moles go back to the problem, and it was 0 0.10. And so for this particular problem, we've added, or the correct answer is that we've added 0 0.13 moles. What have we learned? We've learned that there's a relationship between the number of moles and the volume, and that's what's responsible for a balloon inflating when you blow into it, is that we're actually increasing the number of moles or the number of particles on the inside of the balloon and then we've shown that we can use this relationship to solve problems in which we're looking for volume changes by changing number of moles or mole changes when we have changes in volume.